It was not by my hand that was once again given a cross. You seek to defeat me with a cross? Oh, Belmont, you stubborn fool. Who even made you a vampire killer? Do you have any credentials? What have I told you that the throwing cross from Castlevania was real? And I don't mean cross-shaped boomerangs, an actual throwing cross. Or if you prefer, what if I told you that ninja stars existed in medieval Europe? What on earth am I talking about? Well, the Wharf Cruise. No, not a Wharf Cruise. I'm trolling you anyway, it's pronounced Wharf Kreutz. Wolf Kreutz. Wolf Kreutz. Do you seek to become more than a miserable little pile of secrets? Join the ranks of esteemed humans who wish to pay me tribute. And enter the castle of discord where no mere mortals may tread. Yeah, it's an exclusive discord server for Patreon supporters and YouTube members where we talk about historical arms and armor, games, and other fun things. And of course, throw memes at each other. You also get access to occasional bonus content like extended ad-free versions of videos and behind-the-scenes personal updates. Or if you want to support the channel in other ways, you can whip open the video description below and chop through the affiliate links you'll find there. It's exactly what it sounds like. A throwing weapon shaped as a cross with pointed ends, apparently made of iron. There is one depiction I'm aware of showing one of these being hurled by one armored knight at another who's also holding a throwing cross. And there are also a few references in written sources. Uh, for example, in the town of Iglau in what is modern day Czech Republic in 1568, this was mentioned specifically alongside other weapons that were banned from wearing. The article I got this information from is linked in the description below. By the way, the English version of the article is a lot shorter and doesn't include the sources, so I would recommend reading an auto-translation of the German original. Apparently it was enough of a problem, or common enough, that they decided to mention those in particular. This might seem a little silly to you at first glance until you realize that this is really just a differently shaped throwing axe. And there are all metal throwing axes from the Middle Ages and Renaissance that are pretty similar. It's the same kind of idea, essentially. You have the handle, which terminates in a point. Then you have one pointy end on one side and an axe end on the other, which can be pretty narrow in some cases. And then you've got a spike on top. Uh, sometimes this is called a hurl bat, even though I've read contradictory statements about the etymology. Uh, apparently, hurl bat can also refer to a thrown stick, which makes sense. You know, bat as in stick, not the flappy creature of the night. I also found some other sources linked below as well. One of those mentions that they were used by cavalry, which would be quite effective in the sense that the velocity of the galloping horse would be added to that of the throw, making it more powerful. I've even tested it and reviewed a throwing axe like that, or hurl bat if that's what you want to call it. And the advantage of that is, much like a throwing star, you have a lot of ways to stick it. This isn't as dependent on the distance. You don't have to figure out exactly how to throw it, how many rotations you need. There's a good chance it'll stick with one of these points, or even two at once potentially. And depending on the size, this can be quite effective. Uh, pretty devastating, in fact. Uh, the size, I haven't found too many references. This one here is 34 and a half centimeters long. Uh, which is a pretty good size. Uh, there might have been larger ones, smaller ones, and there are larger cross-shaped shuriken from Japan, which are basically the same thing, with the exception that the European throwing cross has one longer end to make it more cross-shaped, as in the Christian symbol. How effective might these be? So this is one painting where a fully armored knight throws it at another, so was this intended against armor? Apparently there are references to commoners, peasants, and whatnot using these. So it was clearly not a knightly weapon. How would it be? It's one of those things that are very quick and easy to make. You don't have to be a swordsmith. In other words, be a member of a sword makers guild in order to be able and allowed to make these. You know, it's just 
basically two pieces of iron forged welded together and then sharpened. It's very simple. Against armor, it might be effective. I wouldn't bet too much on it. Of course, we always have to take such images with a grain of salt because, well, they also painted things like this, a bunch of knights going hammer bros on this mythical creature here. That doesn't mean that throwing hammers were super common. Whether or not it's effective against armor depends on the type of armor, obviously. Uh, against uh, full suit of plate armor, it would be pretty difficult to penetrate it, or at least far enough. Uh, however, even if you manage to just dent it, that could still be useful in uh, reducing the opponent's combat ability. Against light and medium armor, I would definitely expect it to work. And of course, helmets, it would certainly ring your bell a little bit, that's for sure, at the very least. So if you want to draw a play or write about a character based on a knight who goes Belmont on their enemies, tossing throwing crosses at them, you don't even have to feel silly for it. Uh, there's historical precedent for it. Not that you need it, but hey, it's kind of neat, isn't it? Hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.